Hello and welcome to Precon Decon, the video series where I deconstruct the pre-constructed decks of Magic the Gathering's history. In this video I am continuing my look at the Invasion theme decks uh, and we're moving on to look at Dismissal which is a blue and black deck so let's take a look at the deck list. So we have 22 creatures, we have 9 instants, 1 artifact, 3 sorceries, 2 enchantments and 23 land and mana curve off to the side there. So let's look at some of these creatures. So. Uh, blue and black. So I would guess the theme of this deck is meant to be <laughs> kind of just bounce and disruption because that's what blue and black does quite well. Um, let's start looking at some of these creatures. So we have a meta a metathran zombie. Um, this is essentially just a blue drudge skeletons. You know, um, one mana regeneration. Uh, I've said it a few times in these videos. I always think like one mana regeneration is very very strong. Uh, just makes you know. Uh, even like a small creature like this so difficult to get rid of it just makes it serve as a really good uh, chump blocker uh, one uh, Vidalian Hypnotist uh, so this is kind of spicy so it's two mana for a 1-1 one, one. Um, two colors in the black tap uh, target player discards a card from hand so it's just a repeatable discard effect which is fun I guess um, I can see if you could get like a lock with this that would not be fun for your opponent but uh, yeah, that's kind of mean to uh, put a repeatable discard effect on uh, on a creature like that. So Phyrexian Infiltrator is one of the rares of the deck. It's three mana for a 2-2 two -two minion. And you can play two colors, two blue, exchange control of Phyrexian Infiltrator and target creature. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> that's, that's a thing that can happen. Um... I don't think this is like rules wise, I don't think this is the best way of like emulating the whole kind of haha, I was really your friend the whole time, which I'm guessing is like what is the, the flavor is meant to be. Um, because you know, it gives the infiltrator then to your opponent who could potentially then do it again. Um, th I think this is fine, like, it doesn't require tapping to do the ability, which is actually quite nice. Um, there is the potential of doing this like mid combat. Um, and, you know, snatching away an attacking creature or a blocking creature, something like that. Um, so in that regard, I think it's fine. Um, like four mana, I think is fine for that effect as well. Um, yeah, I think it's, I think it's just okay. Uh, an Urborg Emissary. So there's a whole cycle of emissaries, like one in each color, and they all have a kicker ability. Um, if, uh, you know, if you're, you know, maybe newer to the game, Kicker is an ability where uh, basically as you pay the spell, you can pay an additional cost and you get an additional effect, um, which is, so it makes it like a very versatile um, ability and mechanic to stick on cards. But anyway, uh, so three mana for a three one, which is not wonderful, but if you pay the Kicker cost, which makes it then five mana, um, it bounces a permanent and it doesn't have to be a non-land permanent, which is usually the restriction you see uh more often these days this can bounce anything um i think that's okay for like five mana three one that bounces something when it comes in i think that's all right uh and we have two dream thrush uh so it's two mana for a one one flyer tap target land becomes a land of your of the <laughs> becomes a land of the basic land type of your choice until end of turn so there is like a a decently sized like theme of domain throughout this uh, set as well. Um, domain being the mechanic where it cares about how many um, basic land types amongst lands you control. Uh, so that kind of helps, and Dream Thrush. Uh, I'm not sure there's too much in this deck, we'll get to it, I can't remember the deck list exactly. But yeah, I think Dream Thrush helps a little with that. Um, and yeah, also this, in a roundabout way, can help like mana fix uh, as well, because you just turn one, say like you want to, I know, cast a black card and you've only got islands, you can use this, turn an island to a swamp and then it produces black mana. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Fairy Squadron are, uh, is one of these common kicker creatures. This is not great, I don't think. So this is one mana for a 1-1. One, one. And if you pay the kicker cost of four, so then it totals five, comes in with two plus one plus one counters and it has flying. So five mana for a three three flyer. I think this would have been fine if it had just had flying from the get-go, if it had just been a one one flyer, and then the kicker would have just given it the counters. Um but that's just me. It just feels weird to be have fairies that then don't have flying. 
Uh, title visionary, just one one for one. Tap, target creature becomes the colour of your choice until end of turn. Yep. Um, I say there's a big kind of colour matters theme in uh, in this set, so you know this would have helped towards that, but like it's kind of boring to have it honestly. Uh, and then to Vidalian Serpent, this is just horrible. Uh, there's four mana for a 2-2 two -two that can't attack unless defending player controls an island. Oh, so actually there's a theme that There's a combo, if you can call it that, with Dream Thrush. Um, so four mana for a 2-2 two -two that can't do anything unless they have an island. But if you pay the kicker cost of two, so then you're paying a total of six, it comes in with four plus one plus one counters on it. So then, oh, what, then it's six mana for a 6-6? Six -six? But still with the drawback, still like not great, um, yeah. And then I mean, on the subject of not great, Duskwalker. So this is kind of like the black cloud of fairies, like not cloud of fairies, fairy squadron. Cloud of fairies is Urza's block. Looked at so many fairies. Um, yeah. So one mana for a one one. Um, and if you pay, if you pay its kick cost, it comes in with two counters and it has fear. So again, like five mana for three, three with fear again, I feel like it would have been fine if it just had fear from the get go and the kicker just gave it counters, but yeah, it is what it is. Hate Weaver, uh, fine. Two mana for a two, one pay two target blue or red creature gets plus one plus naught on the turn. Yep. Not doing it. He's not doing any harm. He's fine. Uh, Nightscape Apprentice uh, is one of the apprentice cycle that we have in Invasion. So one mana for a one one. Uh, one blue tap put target creature you control on top of its owner's library. Um, not awful, I guess, in this just because. I mean, if I'm being generous, wait. Combos with ravenous rats were right there, although it does lock you out of a draw. Um, but like, you know, if you got your creatures that with kicker that you've cast early and later in the game, if you want to like get them back to cast them again, or if you just want to save something for removal, uh, I guess it's fine. Um, it also has the red ability target creature gives, gets first strike to the turn. Um, annoyingly, you know, it has an ability that requires red mana and it's in a black and blue deck. So you don't really have a way of using that ability. Um, which is, you know, I just don't think that's great. Um, there is one way of getting red mana in this deck, but you would never use it to use this ability. Um, well, I mean, you might as well, actually. You've got nothing else that costs res that uses red mana. Anyway, and three ravenous rats. Um, we like ravenous rats. They're fine. One, one, make someone discard. That's fine. And then a bunch of multicolor cards. So Stalking Assassin is the other rare in the deck and is horrible. Uh, three mana for a 1-1 one, one, with no protection abilities or evasive or combat abilities whatsoever. Three colors in a blue and tap to tap target creature and three colors in a black and tap it to destroy target tap creature. That's that's just horrible. As a rare, that is just really horrible. Um, four mana and tapping it to tap something is very expensive. Um, I mean, I, I don't necessarily have a problem with the three black and tap to destroy a tapped creature because it doesn't have color restrictions, which is actually a big deal in this block. But um, yeah, and the fact it's three mana for a 1-1, one, one, it's just, yeah, it's just not very good at all. Uh, a Slinking Serpent, which is four mana for a 2-3 with Forest Walk, just overcosted and just bad. Uh, Urborg Drake, it's 2-3 Flyer for three, which is, you know, it's an okay pro, it's okay, but it has to attack every turn if able. So again, like not wonderful. Um, and one Vidalian Zombie, which is two mana uh, for a 2-2 two -two with protection from green. Uh, fine. <laughs> so out, out, of the, out of these multicolor cards, that's actually probably the best one. Um, yeah, the others are just, are just really, really bad. Uh, agonizing, so we have Agonizing Demise as a kill. So we just have some kill spells here. So Agony, Ag Ugh, Agonizing Demise is four mana. Uh, instant destroy target non black creature, it can't be regenerated if you pay the kicker cost. Agonizing Demise deals damage equal to that creature's power to the creature controller. Again, the kicker cost is red mana, and you're in a blue black deck. Like, it's annoying. There was, there was so many, there's better options to put this for the instead of this card in this deck. It just really frustrates me that it was chosen. Uh, we have a split card, uh, Spite and Malice. Uh, split cards are really fun. I really they were one of the things that invasion I really liked the most. These kind of like two mini cards essentially. 
Um, so the spite half uh, counts as a non-creature spell, but for four, which is very pricey for that effect. And malice destroys a non-black creature; it can't be regenerated. Um, so again, like both these effects are effects are like overcosted. I guess you know it's the flexibility that you're paying for. But then you have other split cards where their effects are fine for their cost. Anyway, we'll look at them. And then Cursed Flesh, which is kind of like this weak uh, aura, just a creature gets minus one, minus one, and it has fear, so you could potentially put it on one of your creatures to make it more evasive, or you kill um, an X1 on your opponent's side. Uh, it's, not, it's not great. Then a bunch of blue bounce and, dis and counter magic, so disrupt, uh, counter an instant or sorcery spell unless they pay one, draw a card, that's okay. I think that's that's okay. Um, the fact that it draws a card for one and potentially counters something that they tap out for, um, I think that's actually okay. Uh, prohibit is two mana that counters a spell if its mana value is two or less, and if you but if you kick it, you to spend four mana at you counting of mana value four or less. Um, generally, I think with counter spells, you should be spending less. Um, on the counter spell, then your opponent is casting is spending on their spell, but this is fine again. Like it's potential, you know, it it's got potential. It's okay. It's okay. Um, repulse is just unsummon, withdraw a card tacked onto it, um, which I think makes it actually pretty good. And then probe, two colors in the blue sorcery draw th to draw three and then discard two. So you're not really getting any card advantage, uh, because you you spend a card, you spend probe, you draw three, and then you discard another two. So you're at plus, you're actually at plus zero. But um, I think for three that's okay. But then the the good thing is the kicker, which if you pay the kicker, uh, a a player doesn't have to be opponent. Actually, it could be you if you really needed it to be. Discards two cards. Um, so yeah, five mana I think to draw three, discard two, and make. Someone else discard two is, I think that's pretty good, actually. Uh, a single opt. This is where opt first showed up. Um, it's scry one, draw a card. It's okay. Um, I know a lot of people like really like opt. Um, I it just doesn't really wow me. What does wow me is recoil. I really like recoil, and I'm really disappointed it's never been reprinted in another set. It was. It's been reprinted in a dual deck. But uh, it's never been properly reprinted. Um, so one colour, one blue, one black. Return a permanent to owner's, owner's hand. Again, doesn't say non-land. Amazing. You could do lands if you really needed to. And then that player discards a card. So uh, sometimes this is just going to be like a very roundabout way of doing a kill spell. But even then, like three mana for a kill spell is fine. Um, but yeah, just the potential of bouncing something and making them discard, I think, is really good. And I'm really happy there's three of them in this deck. Uh, we have a single lobotomy. Uh, so this is okay. Um, look at target player's hand, choose a card from it other than a basic land, and then you just strip out all copies uh, from their hand, library, and graveyard. Um, yeah, which I just think is really good. Uh, yeah, it wouldn't be so great if you were playing these decks kind of out of the box against each other, but... Yeah, you know, I don't really know if lobotomies really had much impact, like in competitive magic or whatever. But uh, yeah, I think that's like a pretty good effect if you, especially obviously if you know someone's playing a playset of stuff, but you still have to uh try and hit it at the right time, which fun, which you can actually do with Seer's Vision, which is uh this enchantment here, which is two cards blue and a black for an enchantment. All players, all opponents play with their hands revealed. Uh, and then sacrifice Seer's Vision. Look at target player's hand, choose a card from it, they discard, activate this ability any time you can play the sorcery. The sorcery. So this is fun, because you get to look at your opponent's hand all the time, and then when they you know, draw something that you don't want them to have, um, as long as they don't kind of cast it and it survives around to your turn, and you can activate Seer's Vision, then you can just be like, yep, okay, now I don't want you to have it. So, yeah, I think that's I think that's okay as a, as a one-of in here. And then we just have some mana here at the end. So we have Drake Skull Cameo, which is kind of just an old, bad mana rock. Um, three mana tap to either do blue or black. 
Um, but you know, it's it was early days. It's fine. Uh, one self event. So this is your only way of getting red mana, <laughs> and a single red mana at that. So uh, you would, you know, if you needed to do that nightscape apprentice or that agonizing demise kicker, you get one chance at doing it the whole game. Uh, comes to play tapped, taps to add black, taps sacrifice it, add blue or black. Uh, add blue and black. Sorry. Oh, blue and red. Oh God, talking too many too many colors in invasion block. Um. Yeah, I guess it's okay. Like you can use it to get that extra like boost of uh, you can get two mana out of it instead. But yeah, I don't. Know. Um, and then salt marsh again, just a fairly standard jewel land comes in tapped. Add blue or black. So what could have been? So overall, I think it's uh it's okay as a deck. Like obviously the theme is meant to be kind of like bound. It's it's kind of standard blue black. Like in blowout, the last video we saw, it was standard black red, which was Hey, let's do some discard and kill your creatures. This is the other, this is the other typical uh, deck, which is blue black control. Which is, hey, I'm going to bounce your creatures and counter your spells and kill your creatures that way. So, and you know, the selection of of cards it's got to do that is okay. I just feel like it could have been a little bit better. Like definitely a better selection of creatures. But uh, these are the ones that jumped out at me most that I would have liked to see in here. Uh, so Baron Spite. Um, I think definitely should have been in place for the one of the rares, um, maybe stalking assassin because that is a really awful card. Uh, choose target creatures, choose two target creatures controlled by one player. They sacrifice one and uh, return the other to their hand. I think that's that's pretty good. Uh, Undermine is just a counter spell which makes them lose life, but again that would have been a rare. Uh, Sleeper's robe gives something. Uh, is an aura you put on one of your creatures and it gives them fear and whenever they do damage to an opponent you draw a card. Fact or fiction, uh, this is where it was first printed in Invasion. Um, yep, fact or fiction is just a really uh, fun card. Would have been quite, a, uh, again, like a skill testing card for what is this, you know, like an introductory product. But I don't know, would have been would have been fun to have fact or fiction. And then wash out. Uh, this is one of my favorite bounce spells. Uh, you just choose a color and you bounce all permanents of that color. Um, it's just you know for four mana that's very strong. I think. Um, yeah, always try to find a reason to include wash out in any deck I used to build. Uh, so in summary, yeah, I think this one's okay. Um, I think it's got a better theme than blowout, which was the last one we looked at. Um, obviously the theme here is just you know bounce and counter. It's not too i mean like it's effective probably but it's not too exciting um you know it's something that can be done really in any set it's not really like using any of the mechanics of the set like very well i don't think it's just yeah it's just kind of standard oh here's blue cards here's black cards they sort of synergize okay and you know disrupt your opponent and attack with evasive creatures to win which is fine but again it's just it's just a little boring but, you know, that's just what I think. Uh, I'd really like to know if you had this deck, if you played with it, uh, if you made any changes to it. Uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, but I will be back next time to look at another Invasion theme deck. But until then, thank you for watching and listening and have a good day.